Welcome back to Proverbs 31 Live. So, lots has happened. Um, lots of things have happened, I guess would be the grammatically correct way to say that uh, since our last video. So, this, as you see from the title, the day where I, the day my world changed. Um, so, there's, we're going to talk about that. And so, this is just kind of an update to um, the happier side of this update. Um, is that sometimes I just feel like I'm still trying to find a routine between school because we've started our school year back, homeschooling two kids. Um, I'm still working three days a week. We have church two days a week. And then just being a mom and a wife, like I've got to get, you know, laundry done, dinner made, grocery shopping, all that. So I'm still trying to find that balance with doing all that and getting the videos posted, the blogs written, all of that. I try to post a blog once a week. So far, I've still been able to do that. Um... It's been a challenge, so that's just part of it. Um, it's just life, which you guys understand, and I know that. Um, but the second part um, explains the last month, which if you follow me on Instagram, then you already know what's going on. But if you don't, then this is going to be news for you. So, and that's okay. Um, I'm going to get through this without crying, uh, so that's going to be a plus. But, um... Sunday, August the 4th, um, around 8.21 a.m. Eastern Time, I sat up and I was getting ready to wake up, or I was waking up, getting ready for church. My alarm went off at like 8. I noticed that I had a missed call and a voicemail from a number I did not recognize, and I thought on a Sunday morning, like, that's just weird. I don't know. Like, I'll deal with that um, in a little bit. About 8.15, my mom called, and she hardly calls. I don't know text or whatever. Um, so she called me and she was like, hey, we need to talk um, before church. Or I want to talk to you after church. I can either come down there. I can go to church with your sister who goes to church with me. She said, I can go to church with your sister um, and go to your house. Or you can come up here after church, whatever you want to do. I just need to know. Like, we need to talk. And I was like, I like, I, don't, I don't know. Like, my eyeballs just open, right? So I was like, um, I just come here, I guess. Because I also was thinking, like, I'd like for my mom to come to church. So, because she wasn't coming at the time. And so, I was like, you just come down here. And she was like, okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit. Okay. So, now I'm awake and I'm sitting up and I'm whole. Well, let's listen to this voicemail. Um, and I have an iPhone. So, you know, iPhones transcribe the voicemail. So, I really don't like to listen to my voicemails. I just got to read my voicemails and try to figure it out. So, all that I could get out of it was that it was a corporal from the Warren County Sheriff's Department in Missouri. And they were looking for my mom. Instantly, I've got red flags going off um, because my dad's a truck driver. And if you're calling from out of state and you're looking for my mom, chances are this has something to do with my dad. So, I'm calling from the sheriff's department. My first thought was, like, he has been arrested. Okay, and I was like, oh, here we go. Um, my dad is a concealed carry permit holder and um, was always armed things happen out on the road. Like, you know, we hear of truck drivers getting mugged or beaten or, you know, whatever all the time. Um, it used to be just for their loads. Well, now it's just for anything, especially rest areas. Daddy never liked to stop at rest areas. He'd go to a truck stop. Um, more people, well lit, you know, that kind of thing. It was just a security issue. So, my first thought was like something like this has happened um, and he's had to, he's been in a self-defense position um, and now I have to go bail him out. That was my thought. And then it very quickly flipped to the worse side of things of maybe he's not okay. Um, we've had one incident before of my dad having to call 911 for himself. And he was transported to the hospital and they did emergency surgery. He had a stomach ulcer rupture and he had um, like a leaking intestine or something. There was three things. I don't remember what the other one was. But they had to fix right away. And he, we live in Tennessee, East Tennessee. And he was in Arkansas at a truck stop when this happened. So, we've had things like that happen before. So, we, it, it could just be anything. Okay. My mind knew, said, thought, whatever, that it could be worse than that. Something's happened. But I was not ready to acknowledge that. So, I have to call this, this cop back and I have to figure out what's going on. So, I did. I called the number that he left me and dispatch answered. And I told him that I had a missed call from that number. And the person on the other end was very confused. And he said, did you, did you call 911? 
I said, no, um, I've got a call from this number though. And the officer left me an extension number. Like this is, this is who I'm trying to get in touch with. And he was like, do you know? And I was like, look, my dad's a truck driver and they're looking for my mom and I'm afraid something's happened. Um, but I don't know what this is about. And he goes, I do. And he's going to call you back. I'm going to pass this along. He's going to call you back and it's going to be from a blocked number, like a no caller ID number. He goes, I really need you to answer that phone call. Here we go. Like, I'm already like, oh my goodness. So, like, I'm shaking. I'm sitting in bed. My husband says, what's going on? And I said, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. And he was like, well, tell me what you do know. So, I told him and I was like, something's wrong. So, he gets up um, and he's like, I'm calling your mom. Like, I'm not, we're not waiting. I'm calling your mom. And I was like, okay. So, he, I'm still in the bedroom. He comes out to the living room. He calls my mom and he's like, look, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what you have to tell her. But... Like, she's on the phone with someone. Like, she's got a missed call, and whatever you need to tell her, like, you just need to go ahead and tell me. So, she does. And so, he comes back in there, and by this time, the, the officer's already calling me back, and we're talking, and I'm just, I'm sobbing. Um, he asks who I am, and I told him, um, gave him my name, told him I was um, Tina Morrow's daughter. That's who you said you were looking for. Um, Kevin Morrow's my dad. Like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And he was said, um, he said, Miss Helmering, we found... Your father deceased in his truck this morning. And I started crying. Um, and I said, okay. I said, what, what What? am I supposed to do? And he said, well, he's already at a funeral home here in Warrington. Um, this is the name and this is the phone number. Um, if you need anything else, call me. But like this, this is what happened. This is what I know. I've already, you know, called your mom. I called the local police to where the address was on your father's license. Um, we haven't gotten an answer yet. And I said, well, it's a pretty small operation, so I'm not really surprised. Well, come to find out, like, the police had already talked to them and acknowledged what had happened. They were knocking on my mother's door at 2.30 in the morning. So, she knew. And so, she was waiting um, for my sister and I to be together to tell us together. Being the oldest daughter and the family manager, I was like, mm, no, nope, we're not going to let that happen. I'm going to call this number back and see what's going on. So, that's just a running joke that we have. So, um, so Saturday, August 3rd, my dad passed away unexpectedly. Um, he was not here. Uh, he was at work, so he was in Missouri, and that happened. So, it took all of August to get things done. Um, lots of calls to the company, lots of trying to get some questions answered, figuring out, like, what's my mom going to do, um, just figuring out the next steps. So, I'm sharing this to give you an update, but also because um, I feel like someone else needs to be encouraged. Someone else needs to trust God again, and you need to hear my process um, for this. So, my dad was 57, and there were some health complications, but nothing like, we didn't see this coming, okay? So, I say it was unexpected. It wasn't unexpected to the Lord. It was just unexpected to us, and that's okay. So, through this loss, through what I have walked through this last month, and, and I don't know that, like, it's not over. I'm never going to get over it, right? Um, maybe I can just encourage you, and I can help you to trust God again, and I can help you to look at God again and remember and see and know and trust that God is not forsaken you, and God is still good, and the trials are going to come, and things are going to be hard, but God, okay? So, through this update, I'm going to talk about some things that the Lord has done, um, I was able to go to Missouri and see my dad um, before we went through with the cremation because it was very expensive to get him home, um, get his body home, to do a funeral and all that here. And that was just out of the question um, and the time and all of that. So, we couldn't do that. Um, and after I saw my dad and talked to the funeral home director, paid them, all the things, we drove on from Warren, Missouri to Kansas City, Kansas, just on the other side of the Kansas-Missouri line to the company. Um, they let me come and get um, my dad's personal things out of the truck. So, I got to get his clothes, you know, just everything that he had in there. I got to go through everything and get it all out and make sure we had it all. I was very thankful when we got there that there was a truck to come back to because there could not have been. I've said that this exact scenario is like the worst case scenario happening. Um, and I still believe that it is. However, this is the best 
of that worst case scenario, right? So when you look at statistics, um, this is rare. So my dad wasn't driving. He was parked in a Flying J truck stop safe. Um, and that's that was just the Lord, okay? So statistically, every 15 minutes, there is a traffic accident involving a semi and that didn't happen. It wasn't another semi hitting him. It wasn't him sitting someone else. It wasn't him falling asleep out of the list of jobs. And I don't know who exactly puts this together, but truck driving is the seventh most dangerous job. Out of 100,000 people, which sounds like a lot, 28 of them will die from injuries in a truck related accident. Um, that's a lot. So, and that's just what's reported and you know, whatever. So he statistically, this should have been an accident. So for him to be parked, for him to be safe, for there to be a truck for me to go back to, um, for me to be able to see my dad is the Lord. Um, it just is. I know that doesn't happen for everyone, but for him to be in Missouri far away, um, that was okay. That was just, that was the smallest part of our problems. Secondly, the police officers and either the coroner medical examiner, whoever it was, um, that came to the scene, called a funeral home that was just a few miles down the road, and they were the best people to work with. I am extremely thankful. They were so understanding. They were patient. They were compassionate. They did a lot of talking to my husband, who is the son-in-law that they did not have to talk to. Okay, They could have said, no, we have to talk to the wife, but they let my husband come in and be the go-between and help my mom and help us sort through this. And step-by-step, step, they were not rushing. Um, there were things that, you know, I mean, decisions have to be made. And they were telling us that, like, you know, we need, we need to know this very soon. We need to know this, you know, by tomorrow, whatever the thing was. Um, and that was the Lord. Those officials, the police and the medical examiner, whoever could have, I mean, they did pick the funeral home, but God picked the funeral home, okay? Um, this was not the only funeral home in town, I'm sure. Uh, it wasn't a very big town, but we are very thankful um, for them. And at this millisecond in time, I cannot find the funeral home name um, in my brain. Can't find it. Um, so, when I get out there and we're talking to them, we're meeting them, the wife um, comes in later. And she says, and she gives me a hug. She's like, I'm so sorry for your loss. Um, she goes, but I know you. And I was like, I, you got to help me out. Like, I don't know who you are. And she says, I follow you on Instagram. And I was like, oh, like, that's really neat. Like, thank you. And she's like, love your page. It's so encouraging. And her husband said, that's where I've seen you before. So I thought that was really neat. Just a little, you know, encouragement uh, from that, that, you know, someone else has been encouraged by this page too. Um, someone that I'd never met, um, which I know happens all the time. You guys send me messages and all the things, but like I got to meet her um, and hear that. So that was encouraging. So it was definitely a praise that the director, um, his name was Ray, let us, you know, that he talked to my, talked to my husband and said, God gave us perfect safety as we traveled to and from Missouri, hardly any traffic. Um, I think we were in rain for like two minutes and it was really light. No mishaps, no nothing. Like it was... It was a wonderful trip. We, my husband has family in Missouri, so we got to stop and see them, spend the night with them, um, I think two nights, to while we were in the process of waiting for everything, waiting for my dad's ashes after we got the stuff out of the semi, so we had a place to go and just stop and just be and spend some time together. So I'm definitely thankful for that, and that saved us another two nights on a hotel. Um, so that was a plus. My husband communicated with my dad's company to get information as far as getting his personal things out of the truck, um, calling about life insurance, calling about a 401k, and everyone talked to him. So they could have said, you know, we have to talk to his wife, but they didn't. They talked to us. They had another driver come and take the truck from Warrington to Kansas City, Kansas, and gave me all the time I needed to get there. So they got the other truck there, parked it, locked it up, put a cone in front of it, and like, Nobody needs to touch this. So they unlocked it for me when I got there. Um, two people from the company were standing outside. Like they brought me boxes if I needed them. Um, and they were just, you know, very helpful in 
whatever you need to do. They said there's no time limit. You know, just, just know that it's here whenever you get here. So that was a blessing. Um, with those expenses, I reached out publicly and posted what was going on that, you know, he didn't have life insurance. He didn't have a 401k, what the cost was going to be, um, all the things. And so many of you donated financially. You donated your time checking on me for praying for us. And we were able to experience the church in action from all over the country. And that was incredible. More than I can say. Thank you does not seem like enough. But it's all that I have. Um, and praise the Lord. That was far beyond anything we could have imagined or hoped for. So, thank you for loving my family through all of this. Um, and it's been a month and, and you guys are still praying for me, checking on me. Um, and there's just no words for that. And I know it's because of that, because of your prayers, because of the Holy Spirit, that I am okay um, enough. And, and I know there's going to be hard days. But overall, I think we are doing pretty well considering the circumstances so, I am definitely doing better than I ever expected to be. I never thought that I would be able to function like this. I was very close to my dad. Um, so, prayer works. The Holy Spirit is real. The grace of God is just incredible. You know, you hear people talk about new grace and, you know, to give them grace that they've never needed before. And you don't understand that until you experience it. You just think you know God's grace. And you're like, yeah, he's going to be there. Yeah, he's going to help. Yeah, he's going to comfort. Whatever. Like, that's what God does. It surpasses anything that you've ever known. Um, so, I'm definitely thankful for that. And praise the Lord for that. That we don't have to endure trials alone. That he did not leave us comfortless. You know, he said that when he ascended back to heaven, he said, you know, it's needful for him to go. So, he can send us the comforter, which was the Holy Spirit. And he did. And... He never leaves us or forsakes us. So I'm thankful for that. Um, my daddy had his salvation testimony. So I know that he's in heaven today. And that brings me a lot of comfort. Um, that I will see him again. And I don't have to sorrow as those that have no hope. I don't have to worry about where my dad is. I don't have to hope and convince myself that he's in a better place. He really is. And he wouldn't trade it. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know what emotions and, and knowledge of earth and all that that we have in heaven... Um, but I know that if he could, he would miss us, but he wouldn't want to come back and I wouldn't want to bring him back from that to a, to a life of pain and struggle. Um, so I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for technology. Um, I have months, I think it's back to November of last year of texts between me and my dad. So, and I have voicemail saved on my phone. Um, I don't delete things very often for this purpose. Like, I've, I've always known, like, one day I'm going to wish I had these. So, I'm thankful that I have that. Um, I have videos of him talking, of interacting with me and my kids. And I'm thankful for that, that I can always look back on those and my kids will have those. That they have enough, they're old enough to have memories with my dad. Uh, he was their papa and they loved him. And being a papa was definitely his calling in life. Um, he was a good dad and, but being a papa was, that's what he wanted. Um, like at that point, like the kids are just here to bring the grandkids over. Right. So it was, it was great. Um, watching him see them. Um, I took a week off work, which was only three days cause we were in Missouri. So the next week on Thursday, the 15th, I went back to work and worked Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and that was harder than I expected to be, but I was loved and checked on by coworkers and customers. Um, some of my customers came to my dad's service, which was just incredible. So remember that your church is not limited to just your congregation. We are the body, we are the church. We're not in gangs, okay? You can reach out to someone that you know is hurting, needs encouragement, even if they don't go to your church. Reach out, be the light, be the hands and feet of Jesus. I'm so glad that I'm a part of the family of God. It is beyond words. And we have the privilege of being able to share Christ with each other um, when we need it. Our personal church family has brought meals, help with details of getting the service ready,
prayed for us and more. So I'm thankful, like we need the local church, but don't just limit your prayers, your care, your concern to your local church. So if anything, I've learned through this that it's okay to ask for help. I am not good at that, but I'm getting there. Um, whatever you're going through, let someone in. Let them help. Let them be there for you. Let them pray for you. Let them, whatever it is, the people surrounding you are ready to help, but they can't help if you don't let them. God has given us a church family, Little C Church for the local church and each other, the church, um, to do that. He tells us in his word to edify each other daily, to pray one for another, to bear one, to bear one another's burdens, but we can't let someone do that and be a blessing to us or do even what God said to do if we don't let them. You know, maybe God told someone to make you a meal and bring it to you. And when they say, hey, I'd really like to do this. When's a good day to come by? And you're like, oh, no, no, I'm fine. Please don't. Like, I'm okay. Whatever. God told them to. And you are hindering that blessing in your life and in theirs. So, we have to learn to let people in. And to obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit when he says, hey, make that family a meal. Hey, go take that Go take that lady a coffee. You know, whatever it is, um, go babysit for her. Go clean her house. You know, whatever. Um, I have a friend from church that she's um, single, and that's what she has done. She came over after we got back to help me clean. Um, I didn't need the help, but just emotionally, she was here, and she helped with whatever I would let her do or ask her to do. Um, she has brought us food, made us dinner. Um just to be here, just to have someone here if I don't want to be alone or if I just want to talk or vent or cry or whatever. Like, she is always ready and willing to be here. Be that person for someone else. Um, this is going to take time. It's going to inconvenience you. It is going to put a kink in your schedule. But you have to do it. You have to be there. You have to be available. You have to be an encouragement to someone else because you're going to need this one day. And you have to invest in people. Um, and that's part of hers is she tells me all the time, like, you've done so much for me. You invested in me. Like, now it's my turn to do it for you when you need it. Um, because she's just thankful. But that's how this works. That is what the church is. That's what the body of Christ is for, is to be there for each other. The world's not going to do it. You have to be there for each other. And one person can't be there for everybody. Your pastor can't be there for everybody. Your church, um, your deacons can't be there for everybody all the time. That's why we have to do it. For each other. That's what your Sunday school is for. Your Sunday school class is, is to have that small group of closely knit people. That's your front line. And then the church. And that just helps make sure everyone is taken care of. That is what we're supposed to do. So, I don't know what trial you are walking through. I don't know what battle you're facing. But let someone in. Let them pray for you. Um... Bear one another's burdens. Don't get so focused on your own trial that you're not praying for anyone else. You still have to pray for other people and reach out um, and try to strengthen someone else. It might not be as much as you did before, but don't don't just stop and close yourself off right now. It's really easy to do. Don't do that. And trust the Lord. You know, it's easy to say that you want the Lord's help. You want the Lord to comfort you and sustain you, but we can still block him out and not accept that comfort. Um, you can tell yourself that I shouldn't be this okay. I should still be more sad than this. I should still be crying. I should still be struggling. I should, I shouldn't be happy yet. Um, which is, that's Satan. Okay. Um, you being able to function, you being happy or not even happy, just not sitting around crying constantly is okay. It's not a disrespect to the person that you lost. It's not a disrespect to or an inconsideration to that loved one. Um, it doesn't change their value to you. It doesn't change their memory to you. Uh, it doesn't make them less important. It doesn't mean that you're getting over it at all. It doesn't mean that you don't love them anymore. Of course you do. But you have to let that grace and that comfort of God sustain you and carry you and help you to do the next thing. I didn't want to go back to work. But I have to. I didn't want to start homeschooling my kids again because we took off like the whole month of August. Um, but I have to. Life has to go on. And it doesn't feel like it should. You don't want it to. You don't want life to go on without that person. Because um, it just doesn't feel right. They've always been there. Okay. But you have to. 
and you have to let the Lord help you. Don't fight against the grace of God. Let him help you, okay? So I don't know what you're going through, but stay in the Word. Stay close to the shepherd. Don't run from God. Don't let this trial be something that makes you angry at God. Stay close to the shepherd and let him lead you in paths of righteousness. Today, tomorrow, the next day, don't become angry and bitter. Don't lash out in sin. Let him lead you. It's going to be okay. Until next time.